I open this service in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, you've heard of the saying, or well, it's an idiom actually, can't see the forest for the trees. And it's used describing a person who cannot see the real situation they're in as truly as it is, because they get totally caught up in the detail. They lose perspective on the big issues. In other words, one who is blinded by a situation they are fully involved in. Now, today's reading could have that, can't see the forest for the trees as its title. But the reading is very long, and so we're only going to read an excerpt um, in this service. But I'll put a link in the notes below to the full story, because, and I really recommend that you read it. The, um, a man is born blind, and Jesus heals him. And of course, he is elated, and he goes to the priests, who get angry, who refuse to acknowledge Jesus, refuse to acknowledge anything, because it was done on the Sabbath. So technically, Jesus was breaking the law. And uh, it's a terrible situation, isn't it, when the church people, the heads of the church, the Pharisees, um, do not acknowledge the, the wonderful miracle that Jesus has performed. They even pick on the parents of the man. And I guess the real question is, who was really blind? We think that the uh, Pharisees were so I'm reading from verses uh, from John chapter 9, verses 35 to 41, but please read the whole thing. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what, are we blind too? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we can all be blind at times, blind in many ways, blind to our fellow man, blind to the blessings that our God bestows on us, blind to our own failings. And we sit on the side of the road or stand on the side of the road and we cry out, show me the way. The blind man stood by the road and he cried. The blind man sat by the road and he cried. The blind man sat by the road and he cried Show me the way, show me the way Show me the way, the way to go home The woman sat by the well and she cried The woman sat by the well and she cried the woman sat by the well and she cried Show me the truth Show me the truth Show me the truth The way to go home Nicodemus came in the night and he cried Nicodemus came in the night and he cried Nicodemus came in the night and he cried Show me the light, show me the light, show me the light, the way to go home. Jesus stood by the road and he cried, 
Jesus sat by the well and he cried. Jesus came in the night and he cried. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. The way to go home. Our message today comes from John 9. Verses 1 to 41, and I called it Touched by Jesus. May the Lord bless you as you listen to the story. In John chapter 9, we hear a lot that also had happened earlier. The tensions between Jews and his followers, the religious leaders who despised him. Jesus has confronted the hypocrisy of those who claim to understand the scripture but who interpret it differently to what it says. When challenged by the Pharisees, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I tell you the truth, and you do not believe. The reason why you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. He does he distinguishes here between the true children of God and those who do not belong to him. In this chapter, Jesus tells us about one of those true children and how he became a disciple of Christ. It began when Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The assumption here is that if people suffer, then they must have done something bad to deserve it. This is the typical worldview of the era. In the case of the man born blind, it had to be something done in the womb or something done by the parents. Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in him. We must do the work of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. The story we hear, um, in the story we hear John referring to Jesus as being the physical and also the spiritual healer. The Old Testament uh, speaks of the promised one, healing blindness. It's interesting to learn that in all of Scripture, only Jesus is credited with giving sight to the blind. This is proof of his identity, as he is the Messiah, is fulfilling the promises given to us by his word. His word is truth. Let's see how the story of the man born blind unfolds. So the blindness is neither his nor his parents' fault. Jesus said, that this has happened so that the work of God might be manifest in him. Does this mean that God inflicted blindness upon the man so he could later heal him? No. Let's not get the idea from this verse that God goes around cursing people so that he can later uh, show mercy to them and um, get the glory. God doesn't work that way. Rather, God takes what has happened and turns it into good. We see this is constantly the case in the Bible. In Genesis 50, we read how Joseph had been sold into slavery by his brothers. After false accusations, imprisonment, he rose from the position to become Pharaoh's right-hand man. Later, when he confronted his brothers, he had this perspective to say, you intended to harm me. But God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. He sure is God Almighty. He is in control. As it was with Joseph, so it is with the man born blind, and really with us all. God is powerful enough to take this present suffering that may last several years and use it in his wisdom and grace to create greater blessings. I pray that as we experience hardship, 
suffering, trouble of any kind, we will look to Jesus and trust him, knowing that God is with us, drawing us closer to himself. As he blesses us, we can be a blessing to those around us. Looking at this man's story, we can say that it is unique. And so it is each one of us who has, we all have our unique story. God is working in our life in a unique way. Let's see how the blind man's story proceeds. Jesus said to his disciples, we must work the work of the Father because he sent me to do so. Jesus spat on the ground, made some mud with his saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. It sounds so matter of fact, doesn't it? Yet, can you imagine the joy and amazement the blind man seeing? being able to see now for the first time, and the parents' joy. It's such a beautiful story. Can you picture the scene? Why not close your eyes? Imagine this is you, blind, forsaken, rejected, at the mercy of people. So humiliating. Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy One, sees you and kneels down in front of you. You don't know him, yet you sense kindness, gentleness, compassion. You hear him form a mud with a saliva. You think, what is he up to? Then he touches you, puts that mud on your eyes. Jesus touches your face. And then he says, Go and wash in the pool. Would you? Would I? Jesus touches you, the Holy Spirit's love flowing from him through you. The touch of Jesus softens the heart. It melts us inside. How could you resist? Touched by the Son of God, you do anything he tells you to. You wash that mud away and... The light of Christ opens your eyes. Oh, to be touched by Jesus. Yes, Jesus could have completed, completed, completely healed this man with a word. Why does he go through this beautiful process? Jesus simply approaches each person in a slightly different way. Some he heals with a word, some with a touch. Some he prayed over, and some not. Some, some are healed from a distance, and some very close. Some in private, some in public. Some see Jesus, seek Jesus out, some are sought out by him. Just think about this. Whenever we pray, listen to Jesus, we are touched by him. His Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Just like this blind man's story, we have a story to tell about Jesus and what he's doing in our life. How God calls us, draws us close to himself, opens our eyes to the truth about his son Jesus. How do we hear God speaking to us now? How do we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, become aware of his presence, his love, his leading? You may say, nothing, nothing exciting is happening to me. Or, I hope that God will hear me when I call out to him. I want to get to know him. Your story is the story of Jesus Christ working in and around you, calling you to follow him. You may say, but I do not have much to offer, or I'm nobody special. You, to Jesus, you are very special. He loved you so much that he even died for you. 
And he did not leave you abandoned. No. He dwells in you by the Holy Spirit. The awesome creator God of the universe values you so very much. You are important to him. He loves you. Christ approached this man in a unique way and he approaches you in a unique way. And only you can share with us what Jesus has done and is doing in you. We like to hear your story. How is the man telling his story? It's an amazing story. To the inquisitive neighbors, he himself in insisted, I am the man. And the only thing he knows about his healer is that he is the man they call Jesus. He doesn't even know where Jesus is. Where is he? Is he just moving on? Not seeing how I'm going? At this point in the story, the man knows something extraordinary has happened to him. But he's not aware of the result of that event. His story was destined to go on. Where we are now, right now, we do not know the complete story of our life, but God does. And that is enough for us. He's our confidence, our hope. When we share our story, we might get raised eyebrows, opposition, people questioning us. How can there be a miraculous work in God? They want us to doubt that what God has done and give, and give thanks and praise to someone or something else. Like some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others are asked, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was you whose eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still not believed that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. They assured him that he is, was blind and now sees. But how this happened, they didn't know. They told them to ask him and themselves. They feared being put out of the synagogue by acknowledging Jesus as the Christ. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Of course, they wanted to know what this man had done to take the blindness away. How did he do it? He answered, I have told you already. You did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become a disciple too? Oh, then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses. But for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. To this the man answered, Now this is remarkable. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. You know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. They barred him from the synagogue. They actually made him an outcast. Jesus heard about this. He looked for him. He had not forgotten about the man. 
He had touched the man with his hands to open his eyes. Jesus' love for this man moved his heart, created faith in him. He found him. Jesus then revealed himself as the Messiah to the man. The healed man responded to him by saying, Lord God Almighty, I believe. And he worshipped him. He was awestruck. In reverence and remission, submission, he laid flat on his face and worshipped Jesus. Jesus, the light of the world, opened the man's eyes and heart. A new life in union with Jesus had begun for him. What a story. What about you? Jesus is calling you. You might think, where is he? Jesus, having touched your heart, will not forget you. He will reveal himself to you as Jesus, the Son of God. How will you respond? Moved, touched by the love of Jesus, falling on your knees in reverence, confessing, Lord God Almighty, I believe, or just quietly continuing your walk with Jesus, newly inspired by his touch, at peace, filled with gratitude and joy. As you look back, reflect and see what God the Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit have done in your life. And what is happening for you now? Your whole life is God's handiwork. Our hope and trust are in Him. Why not share some of your story, as God leads you to, and listen to others, hear their story? I pray that our story, being a witness to God, opens someone's eyes to Jesus, feeling the touch of Jesus, becoming aware of Him, being real and alive, wanting to more, know more about Him. To God, the Almighty, be all glory and praise. Amen. Richest blessings to all of you. Heavenly Father, thank you for opening the eyes of our hearts to see your will for our lives in Christ, as his light shines in our hearts to replace the darkness of our sin and weakness. Help us to turn to you and seek your grace. When the disciples saw the blind man, they asked who has sinned, the blind man or his parents. Help us not to condemn or judge others by their circumstances, appearance or faults, but to see the good in them their talents and gifts that can be used to help others. Lord, a lot is happening in the world that makes us feel sad and helpless. The war in Ukraine has gone on for more than 12 months and has affected the whole world. Help the Russian leader to open his eyes to the suffering and devastation that has resulted from that war. There have also been so many weather events like floods, earthquakes, cyclones, etc., that have affected many communities around the world. Help each one of them to come together to overcome their difficult situations. Be with the leaders of our church as they deal with the many issues they face, especially with the ordination of women. Let them see the opportunities out there. We thank you for our pastor Kevin and are blessed to have Addie, Jonathan, Jeff and Peter who are willing to, del to deliver the message at our services. Give guidance and wisdom to the leaders of our congregation as they lead us into the future. Lord, we pray for the comfort and healing to all the people on our prayer chain and also for the many positive outcomes from our prayers. Jesus, open our eyes to the blindness within us and fill our hearts with your grace, love and mercy. Help us to become productive members of your body so that we can proclaim to others that you are our Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth 
as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Like the blind man, we cry out to Jesus to give us sight. We ask that his vision be our vision. Oh, 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 you are my vision, O oh King of my heart. Nothing else satisfies only you, Lord. You are my best thought by day, you're by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence, my light. Oh, 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 oh. You are my wisdom, you are my true hope. I am with you and you. May the God who gives sight to the blind guide the path that you walk and lead you to seek justice and light and to bring his love to all you meet. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. <laughs>